Norman called me in January, after January, and he said, or he called me or someone else called me, I'm not sure who called me, and said, we don't know what to do with Mary after this, January. And all of the things that had happened, I was just on the phone literally and said, I think she's got to have a nervous breakdown. So they did that and we started it. We did a scene where Greg and I, but because of my depression and stuff like that, I suddenly got cold and he's holding me and I couldn't get warm enough. So we realized we have to go slower with this thing because it has to last us till June. So that's what we did. We just took everything slow till all her, you know, demons and everything could go out and then you could see her and you could see the hypocrisy of of what everyone's talking about. I thought she's got to have a nervous break. I couldn't honestly see any other way. This woman had been barred down with values, with with everything, so much so, Mary, that she was like sinking under her own weight. There was no more room. There was no more room to breathe. There was no room to, to do anything. And just the fact of her, how her daughter felt about her and our husband, and she had no idea how to figure anything out and didn't understand why anything was happening and would never say a bad word about anyone. I mean, half the problem. So I went to Norman and I said, I wrote this paper, feel like a paper, the paper I never wrote in school. You know, I said, I wrote this paper for you and what I would like you to do is I'll come in and I'll read it to you over here. He had a microphone in his office over his desk like that, and I said, I'll read it to you, and he said, and I'll have it dictated, you know, like that. So I read him the paper, he had it dictated, and then the next day, in my dressing room, was a copy of the paper, the same paper that I was, I mean, that's what's so hilarious about it. It's the same paper I read to him, came back to me the next day, <laughs> like that. So that's what the, I guess they started to work on in some way for their model and, and I told you we started to go too fast early so then we didn't and that was a whole other world for me certainly for me living in that character and making her living her nervous breakdown and it felt right that that's what was happening it was a very difficult time because it did feel so right, and yet it's not really what was going on with the rest of the show. It was a big path of here, but sort of like I could see where someone might say she's in her own world now. She's going down her own path and this and that. And then when we got Suskind to do that show, that was like, geez, I mean, that was amazing to me that they got him to do that. Was that in your kind of 12-page breakdown of how it should go down? I don't know if I said the Suskind mm -hmm. show, or I, I don't even know how it look. He might remember, but he might not remember either. Um, but, you know, he could say, I'll get Suskind to do it. In fact, I'm sure he did that. I'm sure mine, mine didn't presuppose anyone. I don't think mine would have. I just don't think I was familiar enough with I mean, Norman would always have these incredible big choices and little choices suddenly that just, there it is. That's like an incredible scene that turns the show. Yeah. And I remember that because I remember that morning. I remember feeling just stunned at all that. The last morning we came in and on the set it was a big thing. It's the breakdown day and I... The director told me, Nessa Hans told me the night before, just don't touch him, meaning Suskind. And I was going to be a contestant on the, or a panelist on the David Suskind show. So I didn't touch him. That was my only direction. We come in that day, it's like really quiet. Okay, let's shoot it. We shoot it. It's 
like this, we shoot it, and it's a false thing. It goes, it goes off the edge or something. <laughs> I don't know. We have to start it over again. Okay, just keep it together, keep it there, and then it happened. You know. Was, was that all in one take? The rest of it, the breakdown. The thing? first part, up until when you saw it stop, right? Oh, I want to know. You wouldn't have seen the same thing. It was. From beginning to end, what you saw at the end was probably one tape, but there may have been a little overlap in mm -hmm. there. Me starting something again with, I think, those people, and then really going for the cameras and doing that. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, it was it was done beautifully because it was done so with such restraint, and it was just done, and I wasn't supposed to touch Suskind. It was all perfect. There I am having a full nervous breakdown, but it was also perfect. I knew who I couldn't touch, who I couldn't think. I, I got this idea to talk to the cameras. Some of it I got while I was doing it. Felt so right. It just felt so right.